Hi guys, how's it? It's Garavo. I'm back. It's the 21st of October 2023. I'm very tired. Oh no. I'm exhausted. I, I really don't know what to do. There's just so much happening all at the same time. And I'm I'm just I'm tired. I'm exhausted. There's, there's so much happening, but there's also so much not happening. Um, I apologize for the speech lag. I'm wearing app makeup. Actually, I'm not sure. These days, I've just been going barefaced, so I don't know if I'm gonna wear makeup or not. I guess you'll know once the content is up. Uh, yeah, I'm wearing the same shirt as yesterday. It's a different day though, so <sighs> gauge that. I had a, a rapture dream, guys. I don't get rapture dreams. Um, I just dream about everything else that's evil that's happening. And in this dream, everybody, like we were, like Christians, were giving the gospel everywhere. And everybody was laughing at us. And then all of a sudden, the sky opened up. The sky opened. And people in heaven, like, we just saw them just standing there looking down i didn't see god i didn't see um angels either i just saw people i saw people in heaven like in the clouds they waiting to come and collect us down who we're here and i was in a very crowded road street uh, it wasn't a street it looked like a a gathering a big gathering like a concert I was at, at a venue large of that nature and and we were there were few people giving the gospel in this venue and people thought of us as irritating annoying you know like evangelizing outside of a concert sending out gospel tracks outside of a concert and everybody's just walking past you and they don't care to listen yeah I was partnered with somebody uh, I, I can't recognize the person in my dream it was some girl and the two of us were just being ignored. It wasn't just us. It, there was, there was, there were a few Christians I could count, but we were very outnumbered. It was like a concert. It's like trying to evangelize outside of a Beyonce concert. That's what the the, the crowd looked like. They were just walking right past us, and uh, they weren't mean. They weren't uh, attentive, or they were just neutral. Like they were not mean, but they were also not kind. Not 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 um kind. They were just neutral, just walking around us. And then they, and then the sky opened. There was no trumpet blast or anything like that. The sky just opened. And when the sky opened, everybody saw it, including the people at the concert. <coughs> but nobody was scared. We were excited on some, it's about to happen. We're finally going home. And uh, throughout that time, we kept on saying, see guys, see, we told you, see, we told you, see, we told you. And they were still very cavalier. They were still carrying on like whatever Ugh, what it's nothing and the people in the in the in the sky i don't know who they represented but i know they were people they were it's almost like they were always there or already there they were already in heaven um when 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 the sky opened so i would imagine they're the dead in christ they all looked like young you know like regular 25 to 35 year olds and they were in white robes all of them just looking down and looking down at all of us on some it's time it's now it's now it's now and we got so excited we stopped um we said we were like see see guys see we were right they ignored us and we started to run towards the light the, the light was in the sky but for whatever reason we ran towards the door the en the entrance of the stadium where everybody was gathered because we inherently sort of understood that the people in the sky were going to come down given an assignment to seal those of us who are going to get like you know like um vacuumed up that they had to be like sealed first and so some of the people in the sky not all of them the the, the majority of them just stayed in there they came down and they had these like white tags uh, almost you know what you know what they looked like they they look like have you been to hospitals guys um 
the 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 tags that they put on patients to say this is patient number whatever those plastic tags around their wrists well i mean that's what's going on in public hospitals i'm not really sure if it's the case in yeah i know in private hospitals too like yeah just some tags to identify patients in the hospital and um these these people from the sky these christians came down they looked they took they, they had human form however they had an angelic job so i guess they might just have been actual angels and they were like regular people they were very serious very serious they, they didn't smile they didn't frown they were just serious scanning the crowd down below looking not like not so much scanning it but they were looking for us the christians that were there and we uh we ran towards them we were excited on some it's happening we, we ran towards them we did not want to get left behind and as soon as i, I found i caught one angel slash person from the sky as soon as i caught them at the door and they saw me and my friend the person with whom i was evangelizing at that concert i didn't even have to be like hey 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 i'm going please mark me so that when finally the vacuuming happens i will get vacuumed up he just like very supernaturally like threw a hospital tag around my wrist uh it was white it was bright white and it had my name on it it was like an admission what do you call this an admission tag into a hospital like a patient identification tag in a hospital he threw it and it wrapped instantly very magic like it's almost like supernaturally you know science fictionally around my wrist and it, he threw it another one and it landed on my friend's wrist the one that was next to me the one that was evangelizing with me and we were happy now because this was a guarantee that we were gonna go up and when i looked at the tags it, it looked like hospital admission tags like hospital admission tags like life alert tags like tags for people admitted into a hospital and we were excited and he was uh, doing oh and then when i looked at his wrist he was wearing a very elaborate futuristic apple watch yeah an apple watch and it was blue with fluorescent colors just beaming off it and uh when i saw that watch i i guess i creased my forehead on some angels wear watches or people in heaven wear watches but when i woke up i realized what that meant you know every time the lord shows me a watchman a watchman or what like the ministry of a watchman or a watchwoman he they're always wearing a watch that that's what like a watch yeah they're always looking for the times so why it was an apple watch i don't know that that's just the what the dream chose they were wearing that person was wearing an apple watch so i guess it was a person that was a watchman uh yeah and he was busy tagging people putting them in hospital uh tags uh preparing for the vacuuming but heaven was waiting above one minute guys i need to blow my nose heaven was waiting above for this guy to finish not it wasn't just he wasn't the only one there was quite a few they were tagging people they were waiting for us to finish being tagged the whole process the whole nine uh they were just waiting in the sky uh, just waiting in the sky that's it well everybody did not think much of the fact that we were being supernaturally tagged but with hospital br br brands by watchmen uh, that came down from the sky so i mean like papa that dream i didn't know i didn't know what to think of it and uh, yeah there was a lot of excitement in the dream and when i woke up I, the excitement was was i was woken up by a severe headache demonic attack and like early in the morning like 7 a.m that's early for me because i sleep at like 4 3 a.m i was woken up by a severe headache in the middle of that dream before it could end that headache attacked me to block me from getting to the end of that dream and when i got out of it i was so sad i'm still sad i'm still sad guys you know what yeah anyway we were tagged uh, like yeah the dream ended that way i was like we the when after the angel people slash watchmen were done tagging us there was gonna be a vacuuming we were gonna go in the sky i apologize if there's a speech lag we were gonna go up the dream didn't get to finish because i was woken up with a severe headache i had to go and ask my mom for a grandpa to finish sleeping properly because it was really abusing me that headache and i was extremely sad when i woke up but mixed with excitement because whatever holy whatever energy was in the 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 the, the dream 
was so full of glory and love and excitement and joy it was so full of light it there was just so much anticipation it was so peaceful and it was it we had made it we had arrived we finished guys <laughs> and i got to feel what it feels like the very moment when after fighting for so long you finally go home <laughs> and then i woke up <laughs> and i was still here <laughs> It was just a dream. It was just a dream. It was just a dream. It was finally happening. It was finally happening. And it felt so real. It was so alive. It was, we were done. We were finished. The fight was over. It was now time for them on the ground to get judged. I got to the end. I got to the end. <laughs> And then I woke up, and I was still here. I couldn't understand. I felt patronized by it. I didn't feel glad or happy. It was a combination of joy and sadness because how long have we been dreaming about this day while people treat us so badly, making our lives so impossible? every like maybe that's why god just does not give me rapture dreams he doesn't i dream about everything else i dream about the darkness of this world and all this witchcraft and all these terrible things that are happening i rarely ever get dreams about i don't get rapture dreams i don't i, I ask for them but god knows because look at me now <laughs> just look at me now god knows what it would do to me because <laughs> I'm so persecuted and I'm in so much pain and every day is just such a drag. I don't know how much longer we're gonna be here and everybody else that gets a rapture dream can go back to their parents, to their children, they can go back to their husbands, they can go back to their jobs, do something to push time, to anticipate. When they say he's coming soon they're not leaning on nothing but that to basically live they're able to occupy they're able to live they're able to just carry on with their lives as normal and wait another year another two another three but i just have to just i have to just keep watching my life waste away without being able to find a way out of this and then I finally get a spiritual dream that is so real and I feel like I made it. I made it. I made it. All of these curses, all of these suicide spells, all of this witchcraft, all of this devil worship around me. It's, I'm done. I don't have to deal with it anymore. I don't have to deal with these witches anymore. I don't have to deal with betrayal to a point where people can watch a woman just get wasted. All of her talents, all of her gifts, her whole life. Like you're just standing back and that's it. I'm shadow banned on YouTube. I'm tired of prophecy. I'm exhausted of being told what's going to happen. Because when exactly? When? The Bible says that hope, hope deferred makes the heart sick. And I am sick. I am worse off because of that dream and not better. I don't know which Christian on earth right now, I really don't know which Christian is truly Christian if they still want to push another 10 years here. I, you know, I was watching the testimony of, you know, I hate crying because my tears are just so irrelevant. But I couldn't help but cry because I was snatched out of a dream by demonic attack. And the dream that I was snatched out of was an experience that would free me from this bondage immediately. I had such a bad headache that I could not continue to sleep. I needed to get a grandpa. And that headache happened just before we could finally get vacuumed into the sky. In that dream, the seal that guaranteed 
my ra my reaping into heaven was a hospital wristband like an admitted patient because that's just how persecuted i would be just in the run-up to the rapture that's how abused some of us would be we would be in so much pain so much squalor so much attack so much abuse so much unceasing that getting raptured would be like getting admitted into hospital so we could get patched up so the good doctor the heavenly physician would patch us up the seal was a wristband in the hospital the angel person or slash watchman that was putting that that around my wrist our wrists was very serious on the face until we looked at him excited and he did a side schmuck a side smile on some yeah okay you have a reason to be excited because you're about to go home but he was obviously very determined and serious to finish this thing because something else very big was about to happen afterwards but to us he smiled a little but to everybody else he was very serious because remember everybody could see them everybody world people and us we could see them so he did not want world people people to think of him as just anybody he was a man about his business he was there on a job and he wasn't smiling he was serious rigid like a soldier until he saw our excitement how bouncy we were and he smiled at us on some yeah you're about to go home but everybody else it was like he had this constitution in him that suggested that it's about to get real for all of y'all for doing this to people for doing this to Karabo, for doing this to this other woman for doing this to christians you are you have made that you have made it such that the rapture is more like a hospital admission more than it is a catching away of such glory that has been described in the scriptures to war for the end times church it's going to be a rescue more than it is anything else because their lives will be in danger it'll be an admission to hospital because of how endangered we will be that's what the rapture is going to be like for some people a rescue not just a surprise reaping a rescue that suggests that if it had happened one minute later the people in question would have died our lives would have ended we would have been killed we would have ended up in the ground so it's like getting shot multiple times but miraculously surviving when the paramedics arrive they think you're dead until they check your vitals and realize you're still pushing and so when you go to hospital it is a life-saving mission a life-saving mission more than it is just a treatment mission where they're just treating some bruises that you know you would survive even if you didn't get admitted some of us are gonna go in there basically having been having had a hail of bullets unleashed into our skulls our bodies and we would be miraculously walking around but there would have been so many death spells so many abuses so many attacks that our rapture would be the equivalent of a hospital admission there are there are people guys and i just i don't get it who claim to have gone to heaven <clears throat> They claim to have gone to heaven and seen the glory of heaven and then were asked a question, do you want to go back? You have an option to either stay or go. Make a choice and they like, nah, I have children to raise. Things I still need to do on the earth. So I asked God to, to take me back instead of let me die. I saw that my family would be in pain. And so I ask God to take me back. Whenever I listen to these testimonies, I literally I take them with a pinch of salt because I do not believe there is a single person that can ever see the glory of heaven and of God having lived on this earth, even if they were not persecuted and want to come back. I don't think it's possible. We can't grasp the completeness of heaven, the finality of it. We don't know what you feel when you're there, what emotions are like when you're in that space. We do not know what our senses are like apparently everything is magnified in that place so i mean when you have dealt with this dirty air that you breathe on this dirty earth with litter that you see all over the show with people so blase cavalier nonchalant about suffering across the world when 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 you inhale the air you you you, you smell your next door neighbor's cigarette smoke you go into the kitchen and there's ants all over the kitchen counter because somebody spilled sugar on there and did not wipe the counter and now you have to deal with that. When you drive outside and somebody hoots at you um, 
like in road rage and you don't even know what you did to cause that apparently you were driving too slow behind them and they just hoot at you and then you you go out there and people pass you shade they don't greet they don't look at you they're just carrying on about their business like their fellow man doesn't matter a world so void of love and everybody's just focused on all that they're doing themselves there's no camaraderie there's no love i can sense in the air a change in the way people are versus just five ten years ago there's no more love in the sky people are self-consumed they're self-absorbed they're selfish they're not the way they used to be something's switched man i don't know if you get what i'm saying something changed and that is like a spirit of arrogance pump everybody just looking at their own thing that they're doing not caring at all about what else is happening today after my mom came back from the store she had forgotten to buy dishwashing liquid and then i went to go and get it and when i was driving i saw all of these people walking to the store others were driving and all i could think about was one saturday early morning a bunch of terrorists went into israel all those people down right on the street as they were walking back from the pick and pay just all of them as they're walking i saw this one colored family look like they could have been teenagers all of them their parents had sent them to the store to buy something so they're walking two girls and two boys and all i could think about was there were last week saturday in israel all of y'all would have been shot dead indiscriminately and landed on the floor right there right there with your bodies waiting for the idf to come and identify them and to the to, to weed out the terrorists and as i was driving there was a guy who was struggling to get out of the boom gate at the at the pick and pay boom gates he, he kept on like you know like driving his car forward so that the sensor could pick up his vehicle he was just stuck there for a few seconds before this thing recognized his car and i was like yeah i saw a vision i saw a a, a, a visual on the internet from a video i watched of hamas terrorists who shot and killed people in a car because the boom was not opening on time he, he, the boom was not opening on time and they tried to drive through it ram into it but they died and you could see the car you could see that the, the driver was dead now because they were no longer accelerating but because the car was just bouncing back in inertia and sort of kind of stopping on the spot another is it a dash cam caught a, a, a driver driving through hamas terrorists on the street and they kept on shooting at his car and he was alive until the car veered off and then just kind of parked on the side evidencing that the driver was shot and now dead they retrieved the dash cam footage but the driver was dead you saw the window cracking so when i saw that guy struggling to get out of the boom gate at the pick and pay who ultimately was able to go i was like if hamas had attacked this neighborhood you'd be dead because you didn't you would not have been able to get out of like pass past that boom on time i drove in and then uh when i where i parked a mother well some parent had left her son and daughter in the car while in going inside the, the the pick and pay to get whatever these kids i did not see them when i was in the car when I, I, however once i got out of the car and i was elevated i noticed that they were scrunched down and one of them was sleeping on um in the back seat and i was like yeah there were people whose vehicles were parked and children were in there and hamas just went and shot them inside the vehicles and then they they took out the bodies of these kids and they they just scattered them on the floor for everybody to see that display yeah so long story short i could not help but think about the, what's happening in this world right now while everybody is so cavalier i live in a country that is pro-palestine standing in solidarity the government there might be individuals that are standing with israel but our government has taken a stand for palestine it's taken a stand for hamas our government south africa and i'm living in a country where our own president our own president has taken a stand for people who did that who if this had happened in south africa all of those four colored kids would have been their bodies would have been strewn on the floor the guy at the boom gate would be dead in his car having maybe rolled down all the way to the roundabout 
the kids in the back seat and the one in the front seat that was sleeping in the car waiting for their parents to come back would have been shot dead maybe their bodies taken out of the car and just left on the floor as a spectacle a show for others to see and then as i was walking towards the pick and pay i realized that oh snap me too i'd be on the floor i'd also be on the floor because they would have just indiscriminately shot i, I looked at the security guard that was uh um directing the cars to come in uh, and, and go you know the, the car guard person yeah these car guards that help you park i was like you'd also be on the floor if at all the hamas attack happened in south africa in vilkhevel in my neighborhood you'd also be on the floor because anyone on the street they shot the jogger that that guy would be dead just in the way that i saw a, that very disturbing video uploaded on youtube by the israeli defense forces who was running away from gunfire and landed on his face his body limp like a rag doll just fell on the floor and blood pooling around his face yeah that would be that jogger over there given that his blood would have been pumping hard knock granted the adrenaline and granted as well that he was jogging there would have been a, a, just a, a whole pool of blood very quickly encircling a massive radius around his head but my president Cyril Ramaphosa is standing with the people who did that I mean stuff like that it's bad enough I woke up with that bad headache it's bad enough I have this horrible day it's bad enough I had a glorious rapture almost a near rapture dream because it didn't get to finish I was woken up by the headache and then I get disappointed that it's still the same day still the same state I'm still in this thing that I'm in and then I go out and all I can see are all of those Israelis all of those dead people some of them are not even not even Israelis uh, in the kibbutz the ones in their cars the ones sprawled all over the streets all i could think about was it could have been right here in vilkhevel south africa but it wasn't so that's why my president is so dumb in his insensitivity it's stuff like this that i have to keep waking up to every single day and be like but why am i still here i'm so tired i am so tired so i don't know how anybody can claim to have gone to heaven and then looked around seen the glory of heaven no violence no cigarette smoke in the sky no no dead bodies heaven a flesh and blood cannot inherit eternal life so bodies there don't bleed even when you prick them christ has got holes in his hands as the son of man but ain't nobody bleeding out there's no jugular vein about to go and burst a bubble in heaven there's no sad sighting there's no coroner's rooms in heaven there are no cadavers in med school to cut through so you can study the human anatomy that you might one day patch it up there's none of that there's no death there is no decay there is nothing but joy and we cannot even fathom just how joyful joy gets in heaven because we can't conceive it in this time and space that we are stranded in called the earth we can't conceive it we cannot fathom it indeed the bible says that neither eye has seen nor ear has heard the things which god has prepared for those who wait for him for those who belong to him so we can't even fathom heaven. We can't fathom it. We can't. So anybody at all that claims to have been there, that insisted on coming back, that was not sent back because it's not yet your time, and then struggled to adjust to the fact that the earth is just so lackluster in comparison to heaven. I don't know if I can believe their testimony. There was a woman interviewed by Senchu, Senchi TV, whatever, some South African show on YouTube that basically covers stories like these like near-death experiences uh former sangomas repenting uh visitations by angels all that stuff supernatural stuff they covered the hecticness of south african spirituality with all of its demon at worship the the sangoma and everything they cover stuff like that it's a christian channel dedicated to covering supernatural activity quite a lot it's like sid roth's supernatural just african yeah I, I like I watch it every so often and there was a woman interviewed there that claimed that she had seen heaven and when she was there one of the hosts asked her did you want to stay she was like no way I had children to raise I still had things that I wanted to do here and I was worried about those who would mourn me I'm sorry to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord and who in the world under heaven when they are safe in death in other words they die a Christian they're safe in death this is it it's done eh, eh who wants to go back who who would want to go back into this body of death that that's another issue 
This body of ours is like a sack of potatoes that you have to carry around all your life and every so often one gets rotten. And one and when one gets rotten, the rest of the sack then is compromised. So you gotta take antibiotics or get your foot amputated from necrotizing fasciitis. That's the body that we have. It wears us out at ages. It stops looking pretty. Top of that, it does not develop as well muscularly over time. Well, you, 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 you aspire to become an athlete and then somebody decides to bust a cap in your knee as a 17 year old and next thing you have to go and choose a different career. That's this body that does not regenerate. It does not regrow a, a tail like a lizard. It just withers from the moment you were born. You gotta patch it up. You gotta watch it with dear life. You gotta make sure that you keep it together with sticky tape or else could find yourself in a wheelchair for the rest of your life from the age of 22 it's over you gotta just roll around with with the, the atrophied legs from the age of 22 because you just so happen to get yourself a, that that vulnerable random shaky body of yours in a car accident how could you do that and snap your spine because now from 22 to 82 you're gonna have to be in that wheelchair and because of the shallowness of mankind no man is gonna want to easily propose marriage to you your girl your boyfriend is gonna dump you because he doesn't want a wheelchair bound person so that's also another problem the lack of character that is inside human beings that upon being closer to god you make an even grander observation of the moral turpitude and so you just want to go who who if at all they're in they're truly indwelt by the holy spirit if you have truly been born again if by by indeed truly there is no way that God would ever give you a near-death experience where you go into heaven and you would insist on going back into your body. I don't believe any such testimony. I, I just don't. When you have... go, Yeah, guys. Paul says, I have run the race. I have uh, fought the good fight. I have kept the faith. Once you pierce into heaven and you've made it, who in the world wants to go back? Who? Because this is a striving. The Bible says strive to enter into the narrow gate, the narrow way. For many on that last day will try to but not be able. Narrow is the road that leads to life and few there be that find it. The world hates disciples. In this world you will have many troubles but take heart I have overcome the world. It's a hard knock life for Christians. So I don't believe anybody that claims to have gone to heaven and insisted on coming back just to take care of some children. Ah, you let the dead bury their dead. Or let those kids get raised by an orphanage. Let them fight the good fight and run the race and keep the faith because in and of myself I entered heaven by the skin of my teeth. Frankly, I was struggling to stay strong. Frankly, I was suicidal. So praise God that I got taken by a heart attack. Praise God that I got taken by a car accident because then I did not have to offend God by taking my life and having to account for why in the world I went to heaven early or whatever. I don't even think suicides go to heaven. That's another thing for another day. This world is rough. This body is disappointing. It is disappointing in the worst way. Women after pregnancy, never being able to bounce back, never being able to get rid of those stretch marks, always being insecure, even though you know you are about to inherit an incorruptible body ultimately when you get to heaven. But at the end of the day, you have these stretch marks now and your insecurities are here now. And that, that's what that's something you have to fight by the spirit to put to death the deeds of the body. You have to make war with this body of death. Even Paul says, who will rescue me from this body of death? Who? Who is going to rescue me from this body of death? Yankee man, like in a saga, it's a bag of potatoes. And every so often, like I said earlier, one of the potatoes goes rotten and threatens the whole body. The whole body. So if at all you get reprieved from this body, especially when you have been snagged, taken out, ripped out of this body. During a time in your life where everything was falling apart, it was just hard to push another day. Who in the world is trying to go back? Perhaps in my particular case, I might be considered a little bit dystopian in the way I think. Heaven, of course, is, the, is a really great ideal for me right now because my life sucks. But even for people whose lives do not suck, even a doting mother who has just given birth to her baby and is looking forward to being a mom, if at all she were to truly get out of that body, be absent from it and be present with the Lord, I promise you she would be like, the Lord is merciful and gracious, abounding in steadfast love. He will help my child grow up without me. The Lord will help my kid grow up without me. I've listened. There was only one testimony that I've ever listened to where a guy came back from death and spent the rest of his life depressed. Only one such testimony. This guy, who was it? I forgot, but there's a guy who nearly died from some funny disease, funny illness that he didn't even did. Like he was dehydrated. Next thing he found himself in heaven. He saw all of this glory. When he came back into his body, he was in a lot of pain. And he thought that maybe after his body heals, because he was without pain once he was out of his body. 
that he'll be less depressed but he was aside for sore eyes he even almost nearly got a divorce from his wife because he had changed as a person he had changed altogether as a person because what he saw and where he was was so glorious that being back in this sack of potatoes was just exhausting to push to push it was exhausting he had to go to therapy he had to basically beat his flesh into submission and be godly about it he had to exercise self-control to not be so moody all the time because frankly he doesn't want to be here we are sojourning we are we are at enmity with the earth this here is a body of death that frankly we can't be rescued from fa fast enough we long to go home we anticipate with with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God, even creation waits with anticipation for our revealing. We want to go. We groan, just as creation groans. And anyone that claims to have insisted on coming back, just to take care of some kids, anyone that insisted on coming back just to inhale the cigarette smoke of a next door neighbor, and like proper secondhand smoke, you every like so often, it seeps even into your windows when they're closed. Because people have no decorum. People went and invented cigarettes for what we don't know. You having to go to the pick and pay and 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 and, and envision in your mind all those people being rather the he the, the the people in Israel that were shot dead, killed on the and laying waste on the street by the Hamas. All the townhouse complexes in that area being like the kibbutz, where if you go inside complexes now, never mind on the street, the bodies that are sprawled on the street, going inside homes and bodies have been burnt, charred in corners of houses. Some of those bodies of which belong to babies. Babies' heads being decapitated. That being that townhouse complex that you're looking at. Instead of it being the kibbutz. When you go to the store and you, all you can do is envision that. Because you're still so troubled by the evil of this world. Due to the fact that your own nation. Your, the leadership. Naledi pandemonium. Your own nation. Is standing with those terrorists. And you are like how hypocritical can you be? Look at that bugaboo over there by the boom gate struggling to get out. Somebody done shot people in their cars as they were trying to push past the boom gate in Israel. And yet you, as Naledi Pandor, can stand with Palestine. You can stand with Palestine. Because it didn't come to Soweto, did it? It didn't come to Vilcha Yevel, did it? It didn't come to Guamashu, Umlazi, Ayaya Kukuguleto. It did not go to Santon. It did not go to Umslanga. It did not go to Eastern Cape, Western Cape. It did not go to Northwest. It did not touch any of South Africa. And so you can luxuriously just stand for that level of terror against a people who did not have it coming when you live in a world like that especially in a country like that where your own leadership is standing for that level of rubbish where in the world is justice ever going to come for you if these buggers can stand for all of that brutality in israel your own presidency your own head of state can stand proclaiming all that rubbish standing in solidarity with palestine don't come and tell me nonsense you might say palestine but deep down inside you know what we really what you we know what you really mean is hamas we know what Sawa ramaphosa and my lady pando actually mean is hamas but i mean to paint it nicely with some pink nail polish we will politically correctly call it palestine as opposed to hamas a terrorist organization it could have been the crowd and pay and those nearby kibbutz otherwise known as townhouse complexes or not in that general region where they would have found decapitated uh, heads of babies also charred over and above decapitating them that's 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 the world we live in and i don't like it i don't like it i'm exhausted and i i understand i see now so maybe i need to stop asking god for rapture dreams because i think they'll encourage me inside these dreams it's so fun it's so beautiful the the depth the girth of emotion in them it's so rich it's so rife it's nothing like i've ever felt before it is a taste of heaven i don't want to taste it because hope deferred makes the heart sick because when i wake up i'm still living in the squalor i am still living in these dep decrepit conditions when i wake up i still have a bad headache evidencing i've got a body that's got blood i've got body that can malfunction i've got a sack of potatoes one of which has gone awry i gotta take painkillers for a headache induced by demonic attack i don't want this body of death and even though i long to be a mother and even though i long to be a wife even though I long to have a normal life so that I can live and thrive and be happy, multiply, occupy the earth. Bottom line is I would take heaven any day without children. I would take heaven any day without a husband. Because who in the world is going to rescue me? Never mind from this body of death, but from this planet of death. It is just disturbing to look at the cavalier, nonchalant disposition of selfish people who are lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, slanderous, despising those who do good, always learning, never coming to a knowledge of truth, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. Who in the world will rescue us from that? But God, 
How long is it going to take for me to go home? How long is it going to take for all of us to go home? Frankly, I'm happy that my silver cord should be cut any day now. I am not even pedantic about getting in the rapture, just going home. But I know I can't do it my way like Frank Sinatra. But really and truly, when you've gotten the human race to a point where they can't even live and they can't even stand to be in their own bodies. They can't even stand to be in their own countries. Every time they look at just a regular car parked on the side of the street, all they can think about is some massacre happening across the world. That's just the thing. Humanity does not have the right perspective. People are not seeing things the way that they ought to see them. People have no clue how forbearing, long-suffering God is. How magnanimous he actually truly is. What he has to deal with every single day. It is near and dear and close to God's heart what happened in Israel. Just as that bombing that happened in Palestine. In Gaza, so that, that bombing is near and dear to God. Every last child that passed away before they could even uh, write the one, two, threes, ABCs, they're near and dear to God. And so therefore, since the Lord has called us to be fashioned unto the image of his son and so be like him, we also ought love that which he loves and hate that which he hates. We ought pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We ought pray for the peace of the earth. We ought pray for camaraderie, for recompense, for comeuppance. We ought pray for justice. We ought pray for recognition of what is right and what is wrong. Because the Lord hates unequal scales. And so if you're close to him, you will see inside the vehicle of a South African mom, two Israeli children that could have been the victims in the kibbutz. But just because they're in South Africa, they're still breathing. You ought see those dead children in the eyes of your living kids that you might never give favor to a person who did that. That you might never give favor. You need to see things in the eyes of God. Be close. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. And when the Lord draws near to you, while it is a blessing and a gift, to be that close to the king of the universe, it is also a deep and, 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 and awesome burden. When you are living on an earth that is this insensitive, when you are living on a planet where a parent, a mother, can raise a child, and then after raising that kid, leave her to rot at the back of her house, gathering dust while she is persecuted by a myriad of perverted men across the world and some other random females not taking into consideration that who in the world is content with a person having no life at all no life nothing to look forward to no job no children to raise no husband to do to get glared to dotingly glare into the eyes of nothing to look at nothing to look at and that's a person's life no future and people are proliferating this rubbish, this nonsense. If at all you cannot put yourself, draw near to God, that he might draw near to you so that you can see as you ought. Why do you deserve to be left to roam on an earth where grace is given you daily, where the sun continues to rise every single day, where the air is a breathable, albeit smelling of cigarette smoke? And so you get to live another day because of Kokumoya. Why under heaven, if you cannot consider your fellow man and have that empathy, do you anticipate that God Almighty is just going to leave you in all of your insensitivity, being callous, loving yourself, loving money, boast, boasting, being prideful, disregarding pain and sorrow around you, not even wondering why some people have got to be car guards while others earn salaries that are way too lofty given that they sit around at their desks twirling on a swirling chair all day long doing nothing while somebody burns in the sun and a person working harder than them is earning close to nothing. Why those injustices are not eating you alive is evidence of the fact that humanity does not deserve God. You are born dead in trespasses and sins. There is no end to what evil you can commit. Your heart is to see fill up above all things and desperately wicked. And there is no telling how far you can go. In so far as you're cushy and comfortable in your own little corner of the planet, you're good to let some other person live a life that is full of hardship even though they work harder than you. That is an unequal scale. That is what the Lord God Almighty said. I am an abomination and a travesty to heaven. Why? Because I work like a dog yet I get no money. I am not enabled. I'm, despite working by the sweat of my brow, I am not getting money to buy my bread. I gotta go and ask a grandpa from my mother in the morning when I am waking up with a headache because I don't have money to buy my own grandpa. I gotta wait for an allowance at 39 years old of 500 rands a month. Allowance of which only came through because she felt guilty for the way I was being persecuted by that little animal in America. But before then, I was getting nothing at all. So at least I've got tampons. But why is that even a thing? Why is that even my life? Lack of sensitivity. The Bible says, draw near to God and you will draw near to you. You are not drawing near to God and so you cannot feel the pain of the world. You are able to walk in your skin while you watch some dude navigating your vehicle out of a parking lot not wondering why is he struggling so much to eat while I am so fat even though I am lazy basically in comparison to him. Some of y'all can't even stay awake upon being at your desks for two hours in the office. After lunch, get graveyard shift, you are literally with itis falling asleep at your desk. While there are people that have to be on their feet all day long and they can't afford to sleep because they're security guards. You don't wonder why they're not making more money because they were earned. They are literally working harder than you. 
There is a time when that's gonna come and that's what I'm waiting for. I can't wait to go. I can't wait to go. It's called the millennial reign. No longer will a person plant a vineyard and have somebody else collect its fruit. Have somebody else basically earn a profit from that produce. The millennial reign is going to rightfully recompense people irrespective of their level of education. When you work hard, you earn your salary and a rightful amount of money. So gardeners are going to own entire mansions in the millennial reign. That is called egalitarianism. That is true equality. Not what under heaven the system of the world has created as equality. What, what it has called capitali cap capitalism. That's messed up. Even socialism of which is like out of this world ridiculous. Because it is incentivizing the poor at the expense of the rich, some of whom have actually worked hard. So no system is perfect. Nothing at all makes sense. The Lord is the only one that's going to be able to establish a righteous reign in the millennium. That's going to set that record straight. And until then... I am stuck in this body of death. I am stuck as a young woman that is becoming an old woman with nothing to show for it even though I had the desires to get there. Because people know how to manipulate spirits. They know how to fly on freaking brooms. They know how to put charms outside of your house so that you can trip over every time you try and do a new thing. They know how to do strange stuff. And then they stand with a president, keep on voting for him year after year, that is content with the massacre against Israelis insofar as he calls it pro-Palestinian as opposed to pro-Hamas. I'm done with you. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. How an entire country, pompous, that's not even an Arabic nation. It's not even an Islamic nation. It's a Christian country. How it can stand with Palestine at this point, I don't know. I have no idea. I keep saying I was born in the wrong country. Wrong country. Because it is standing for everything I hate. Top of that in Tanduk Tagat. What are we going to do? What can we do other than look up and lift up our heads because our redemption draweth nigh, right? But that's just my qualm. That's my issue. The fact that the redemption draweth nigh, but it's not here. It is the waiting that's really wreaking havoc in my life because I've been in this position for almost a decade. A decade. Do you understand? A decade. And I'm going nowhere. All I want to do is go home. I cannot look forward to a future and a rapture dream that otherwise makes other people very excited makes me cry because I feel patronized by it due to the fact that I know that God is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, not willing that anybody should perish, but that all should come to a knowledge of him. I also know that a day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. And so really, while that dream might have in in inferred to me that it might be soon, what is soon? Next year, two years from now, three? One year is one year too many in my life because I have got bombs landing in my backyard. I am in the crossfire daily. I get lambasted by witchcraft from such filthy, perverted men on the daily. That I, I can't wait to get out of this jumpsuit, this onesie, called this nyama, this meat. I want to be separated from this body of death. Because flesh and blood cannot inherit eternal life. But my spirit and the spirit of God in me testifies with my spirit that I am a daughter of God. I am sealed. But I got to wait until the day of redemption. I got to continue to work out my own salvation with fear and trembling. I got to strive to enter in. I got to get to a point where I am successfully about to give up my spirit, breathe my last. Tom Horn recently, but like one day ago, just yesterday, he passed away. May, may his soul rest in peace because yes, indeed, some people, when you say that about them, it's true. Do not just throw around rest in peace, guys, because not everybody's resting in peace. Tom Horn passed away and I was sad for all of five seconds until I was instead of too happy. Because I was like, oh goodness, he made it. He's there. He got there. He arrived. He finished the race. I found myself being jealous of Horn. Not Hughes. Did I say Hughes? God forbid, no. I meant to say Tom Horn. He passed away. He was sick for a season, I imagine. And he, he was late yesterday. I, I just, like, he is home. He is young again. He's renewed. He's fresh. He's got emotions he never fathomed he could ever have. He can't sin anymore. He's not inebriated by sorrow upon looking at the world. He is not guilty about anything anymore. He is not crying anymore. He is just good. And he's waiting now to have an incorruptible body caught up to the spirit that is in heaven at the rapture. And then watch the Hunger Games with the rest of us. But when is that date going to come? They're happy. They're cool. And I envy them. What in the world? Like when I am coveting dead saints. Dead saints. Like literally. I, I said that to God yesterday. God, I covet dead saints. Because they finished the race. They, they, they made it. They made it. They made it. Next part.